Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the very last part of section 3.3. Look up there, you see that? We're on D. So this is our fourth pa podcast of 3.3, and it's going to continue on with the light thing that we was we were doing. Now you've seen the demos on light. Hopefully you understand about excited states and ground states. And what I want to focus on on this podcast is simply just looking at light and, of course, doing a little bit of math, right? Well, the first thing you need to understand about light and all of the energy spectrum is it travels in waves, all right? This electromagnetic spectrum uh, encompasses a whole bunch of different uh, energies that we're used to. For example, look down here. We've got radio waves. Absolutely you know what those are, right? Okay. Now, there's a scale down here. Look at this. Radio waves are in the between the 1 meter and about 10 meters. So that's pretty big, all right? And by the way, when we say waves, we're talking like that, okay? And then the other thing, frequency is uh, somewhere around the 100 uh, megahertz to 10 megahertz. Now, what frequency is, is let's say I have a point right here. It's how, f how many times that wave goes by that point. Okay. So radio waves you're uh, familiar with. Microwaves, look at that. Yes, those are the exact same microwaves that you cook your food with. Uh, it's my understanding that microwaves tend to spin water molecules, and that causes the heat. Then the next one, if you have seen any kind of military training, or if you're a black ops fan, or any kind of, uh, I don't know, spy movie, infrared is the next amount of, of energy that we're looking at. Infrared is, is basically heat. Um, some animals can detect it. If you've got those cool goggles from the military, you can also see that. Then we get to the very special area, the visible light spectrum. And that's from this little area right here. Okay, And that's where our eyes can see. So look at this whole spectrum from right here all the way to right here. All we can see with our eyes is this very thin little band. Now I want you to come up a little top higher here. Notice it's from 700 nanometer range to the 400 nanometer range. And a nanometer is one billionth of a meter, so it's pretty small. And then there are the colors of the rainbow. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and violet. What, what I wish this little diagram had here was indigo. N-D-I-G-O. Okay? And indigo is kind of that new blue gene color. It's really right around, right around this area right there. Okay, maybe I should make red. Yeah, right, right, right around there is the indigo area. Now, let's say, for example, I ask you a question like, "Hey, what are the colors of the rainbow?" Well, if you don't already know them or you can't recall them from the last rainbow you saw, there is a nice little mnemonic device called Roy G. That's a G. Biv. Okay. Roy G. Biv. That's the dude. Who is it? Well, it's the guy that tells us the color of the rainbow. So we've got red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. Okay. Roy G. Biv. Now, by the way, let's say I did ask you what were the colors of the rainbow. You would have to give me more than Roy G. Biv, right? You would have to actually give me the color. So make sure you know what those letters mean. And about the only one you're not familiar with is indigo. All right, so there's our little spectrum. Now we move on a little bit. Uh, look at the waves. Let's look what's happening to them. They're really tiny, a nanometer, okay? Nanometers. And the frequency, notice as the wavelength is getting smaller, look at the exponent on these numbers. 8, 10, oops, sorry, 9, 11, 12. So the frequency is going up as we go this way. And the size of the wave, as we go this way, is going down. They've got this inverse relationship. As one goes up, one goes down. Um, so this next one that we have right here, ultraviolet, right? otherwise known as UV rays, those are the rays that are harming our skin when we get sunburn. Uh, for those of you that are tanning all the time, uh, all we can do is hope for you. All right? But the UV rays that are coming from the sun, they have higher energy, and they tend to cause some damage with our eyes and with our skin. Our ozone layer right now has uh, uh, got a large hole in it, but the nice thing about it is it does protect us from 
ultraviolet lights. Uh, we can't see in that in that range, but I believe there are some insects that can see it. I've seen some pictures of flowers taken in ultraviolet light, and they look differently. And and uh, it's my understanding that. Um, and some insects can see it. Okay, so now we go this way. The frequency's going higher. X-rays, all right? What do X-rays do? Well, hopefully you, you know you've had, well, maybe you haven't had an X-ray of yourself, but if you've ever broken a bone or hurt a knee or an ankle, they pump an X-ray, and it happens lickety-split. It's usually like I was just in the dentist's office the other day, and I heard the little beep, and that was all it took. So those X-rays go through your body, but they slow down in bone, and that allows the uh, us to catch an, an image. Okay. Then the last one, the highest frequency, the smallest as far as wavelength, are the gamma rays. And if you're a comic book fan like I am, you know that gamma rays made the Incredible Hulk, right? Um, but gamma rays are high energy. Uh, the way I understand it, they are flying through the universe and they don't even slow down when they go through something like planet Earth. Right? They just go right on through. So those are all the different uh, wavelengths of the electromagnetic spectrum. It's important that you know it. It's important that you understand the relationship. Again, as the wavelength uh, this way gets smaller, the frequency gets bigger. Okay, so that's a little relationship to remember. So now that we have a little feel for this, what I want to do next is uh, I want to just kind of define this wave. I've already got a little bit of it, but there's the wavelength. And I'm going to try and draw a wave over here. You guys have already picked up on my drawing skills. Well, you know, that one's, that one's even more horrible than usual. Let me try it one more time. That's a little better. Okay. So there's... No, I don't like that either. How about this? I'll just erase that part. There you go. Nope. Sorry. Let me try one more time. Third time's a charm, maybe? Ooh, that's pretty good for me. Okay. So there we go. So what's the wavelength? Well, the wavelength, you could pick any two points on the on a wave that are consecutive. Typically, it's from peak to peak right there. Okay, so this distance from right there to right there is the wavelength. The symbol is a lambda symbol. And for those of you who play Half-Life, you know all about that symbol. So there's a symbol. That's a lowercase l in the Greek system. And then the, the unit that we use to measure in is, of course, the metric system. And we measure in meters. So the wavelength is in meters. So let me go back to my picture here. Okay. And you can see kilometers, meters, millimeters, micrometers, nanometers, picometers. Okay, so the meter is the base unit for uh, wavelength. Next one is frequency. Let me pull this out here. Okay. Now the frequency is how many waves that pass a given point per second. I kind of already showed you that. But officially it's per second. So I have this point right here. And it's a measuring device, and it detects when a wave goes by, all right? Now, let's say we have 100 waves per second, or 1,000 waves per second, or a million waves per second. That is the frequency. The symbol for that is a, a V sign. It's, uh, that's a lowercase nu in the Greek system. And the unit is a per second, all right? Now, we could write waves per second, but we typically don't, all right? Usually we just use this per second, and it's understood that that's when the wave goes by. Uh, the or, as I've got here, we can use what's called a hertz. And this is where you might know a little bit about this if you are into computers, or even if you're into cell phones. Um, a hertz is a per second, and if you think about computers, um, and you talk about uh, the processor, the real good ones right now are about 3.3 gigahertz chips, right? When I bought my first computer about 15 years ago, my first PC, it was a 0.233 megahertz Pentium 2 chip. T -I -U -M. And it was screaming at the time, okay? But here's 
mega and here's giga. Giga is a thousand times bigger than a mega. So you can see this is a lot faster. On the back of your cell phones, there might be uh, a little number that shows you where it operates as far as gigahertz. And if I remember right, it's somewhere in the hundreds or no, about 80. So let's say if it was your cell phone, we're talking about a frequency somewhere right in here. So I'll write cell phone. Okay. So that's where our cell phones tend to operate, right in that little area. All right. So there's wavelength and there's frequency. There's one more thing we need to know about, and that is the speed of light, which is very fast. Look at that. 3.0 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. Okay. In a second. Now I'll just write this number out so you can enjoy the the size of it. I mean, look at that. That means in one second, light traveled 30 million meters. Pretty darn far. Okay. The symbol is a lowercase c. Okay. And then the unit, because it's speed, you have to have a distance and a time. So the unit is meters per second. So we've got those three things. And those three things are really all we need to calculate um, some energy. Well, we need a little bit more to calculate energy. But, but we're going to use these three things to calculate um, some values with uh, our electromagnetic energy.